plant tissues. We know that the fundamental unit of life is a single cell, but all higher organisms are made up of more than one cell, also called as multicellular organism. In multicellular organisms, similar kind of cells group in a specific tissue to perform particular functions which support the efficient functioning of organisms by providing division of labor. Examples are xylem, phloem, etc. The next level of organization forms organs combining different tissues. Examples include root, stem, leaf, etc. There are two types of plant tissue. First one is meristematic tissue which has dividing cells. The cells are very active, have dense cytoplasm and distinct nucleus to carry out division. They have thin walls and easy to divide. They are small or no vacuoles as do not need to store anything for long. According to their location, there are three types of meristems. Apical meristem is present at the root and the shoot apex and is responsible for the plant height. Intercalary meristem is present at the base of leaves and nodes. Lateral is present in sides of the stem and increases the girth of the stem. Another type of plant tissue is permanent tissue. How are these formed? Older meristematic tissues, which lose the ability to divide, get differentiated to permanent tissues. They are again of two types. Simple, which are made up of same type of cells, and complex, which are made up of different types of cells, but performing the same function. Now, on the basis of adaptation in cell structure and their function, Simple permanent tissues are further divided in three types. Number one, parenchyma, again, has three subclasses. Parenchyma has oval cells with dense cytoplasm. They may or may not be loosely packed. The ones with chlorophyll are called chlorenchyma and help in photosynthesis. Some have air spaces and are present in aquatic plants for buoyancy. They are called as Aaronchyma. Parenchyma are found all over the plant body and help in storage, photosynthesis in some and giving buoyancy in some, for example, aquatic plants. Number 2. Colenchyma are polygonal cells with thickened corners. They provide flexibility to plants so that parts can bend without breaking. For instance, they are at petiole, leaf stalk, etc. Number 3 is sclerenchyma. These are dead cells with no protoplasm. They have thick cell walls and the cell lumen is lost. The main function is to provide mechanical support. They form the hard covering of seeds, jute, wood fibers and husk of coconut. Till now, we discussed simple permanent tissue. Let's know more about complex permanent tissue which is made up of more than one type of cells. Xylem and phloem are complex tissues. Together, they are called as vascular bundles. Xylem is made up of mostly dead cells, which are tracheids, vessels, fibers and Xylem parenchyma 
which is only living cell type. Xylem's main function is to distribute water and minerals from roots to upward to the parts of plants. Other than this, Xylem also provides mechanical support to plants. Phloem is a conductive tissue with mostly living cells, which are phloem parenchyma, sieve tube, companion cells, phloem fibers. Sieve tubes are the main conducting cells which are supported by companion cells for their function. Phloem fibers give support and parenchyma stores food. Phloem conducts food in both directions. There are special protective tissues also present in plants. That is, outer covering of the roots, stem, leaves, and is called as epidermis. Epidermis protects the inner parts from injury, excessive loss of water, and infection from microbes. Some epidermis cells get modified to root hair in the roots to absorb water and minerals. Root hair are so tiny that they are able to reach between the soil particles. On the other hand, in leaves, lower epidermis has opening called astomata for exchange of gases and transpiration. In trees, as the stem grows older, the outer layer becomes compressed and dead. It forms cork or bark of a tree. This is made up of dead cells without intercellular spaces and have deposition of suberin to prevent water loss. It is formed by secondary meristem and replaces the epidermis. How do histology and histopathology differ from each other? Histology is the study of cell and tissue of animals and plants, whereas the histopathology is the study of diseased tissue and it is an important tool in anatomical pathology. The diagnosis of cancer is done by histopathological examination of samples.